If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me and subscribe to me on all my other social media platforms. <laughs>
This is the first time you hear the lower death metal roars come in because so far it's been all like the black metal scream. Bass line and groove. There's a nasty crawling riff in here and a chugging breakdown, which gives it a little bit of a bloodbath vibe, I would say. Now, Banished to Obscurity starts off with an eerie clean guitar that's quite atmospheric, I must say. Then it kind of goes back and forth between two kinds of gallops. A thrashy gallop and a punky gallop. But then you do get a really cool, like, double-time break. And then D-beats return. Distorted shapes, like I said, it has that doomy start. But then you get, like, that nasty tremolo and into more thrashy energy. But, uh... There's a really cool transition where it gets into this, like, evil atmospheric section. Then the following track, Grace, which was uh, starting off pretty much right out of the rip with, like, those more thrashy parts. Blasting Fury, Nasty Tremolos. But the leads on this album kind of... Some of them are a little bit kind of on the squealy dive bomb side, but this... This is a more rockin' lead, but it's ripping as well. Then we get to Darkened Wings, which was just a an acoustic interlude, but it's a very beautiful acoustic interlude. And then we get to the final track, the title track, the longest track of the album at about eight and a half minutes. Doomy start, then it gets into like these thrashy Swedish death tremolo parts. But then you get some like really smooth dynamic transitions going on throughout the entire song. More melodies come out here on this track. Like, you got little hints of melody on a couple of tracks earlier, but this is where the melodies really come out. And then it gets into, a, like, a nice acoustic break. Dark, melodic lead. Like, it was the most atmospheric, dynamic lead of the album. Just dynamics galore is this track. And then it ends on that more acoustic note, which I thought was a pretty cool way to end this rather energetic album. Now, as far as the things that kind of bothered me or that I didn't like about the album, I would say, while I do love Thomas Skogsberg's production back in the day, he definitely it definitely feels like he needs to adapt a little bit more to like the modern times because the drum tones on this album are very, very thin. And then the guitars and the mix itself, it's quite muddy. Like... Not the best sounding album to come from Thomas Skogsberg. Again, I feel like he's maybe trying to still get used to like the modern ways of production, whereas, you know, compared to like what he was doing back in the day. So yeah, the drum tone's thin, the guitars and the mix is really muddy, and then it does get repetitive. Like it relies very heavily on like those crawling tremolos. And it does feel derivative to the old school bands, and whenever it's riding on, whenever it's getting ready to cross that line of sounding like a copycat, it's just rubbing on that line ever so much. But the bands that they worship are classic bands, so it's not necessarily a problem, just a notable thing that happens. So overall, the pros and the cons, this is still a fun, energetic album. I give this also an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed this. I thought it was very fun. Nice kind of blast from the past, even though hopefully if Thomas, Thomas Skogsberg sticks around for another album, hope he can get the mix to sound a little bit tighter. But of course, this is all just my opinion. What did you guys think of Exorcist at the Somber Steps of Serenity? or to Serenity, let me know in the comments, and until next time, keep your horns high and your dreams wet.